recently, I was contacted by my sister who lives a couple states over and I was asked, hey, would you like our cousin's GameCube? Yeah, because I knew that if I said yes, I would get my hands on one of my favorite objects in the world, an official Nintendo GameCube controller. And uh, here's the thing, you know, I play Ultimate. You know, this is still a relevant controller. You can still use this. In fact, it came with two, technically. Technically, it came with three, but this this is like a micro con. I So it was great to get these, but I was kind of wondering, wait, why is my cousin willing to give up his GameCube? But when we saw the box that it came in... Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm wasting my life. But it came with the goodies you'd expect. You know, some games and the cube itself. But when I got the cube itself, I saw this. I'm like, oh, a memory card in 2023. But when I held it, another memory unearthed itself. Many years ago on YouTube, on either like IGN or GameSpot's page, one of the game reviewers, there was this awesome little show called The Game Archaeologists. It was this show, there was only three episodes at the time, there might be more now, where they got their hands on some PlayStation and GameCube memory cards and Xbox's hard drive. They went through, they saw what games had been played, and then they went through, and since they were a game review site, they had every single game, they'd get the games, and then they'd look through the games and kind of see if they could put together like a profile of who would own the memory cards beforehand. And I thought it was a very cool show. I absolutely loved that show, but the one thing I wanted more than more episodes was to make an episode myself. But, you know, whenever would I get a memory card that I'm not familiar with, as well as the games. So I went and I bought myself a pith hat, which I haven't opened yet. <laughs> I don't know what the green thing's for. And I got a pith hat so I could become an archaeologist myself. By the way, I love what this bag says. I'm gonna have to read it to you because it's, it'd be selfish for me to keep the sentence to myself. This bag is made of plastic. Use it for as long as you like. However, when it is no longer of use, do not leave it in the countryside of the sea. Dispose of it in a refuse container. This world belongs to us all. We must protect it. So right now, I get to live out a dream and shoot my own episode of the Video Game Archaeologist. I'll call, I'll call it the Video Game Anthropologist just to make it a little distinct. And we'll, we'll go and make a profile on my cousins. Oh, let's look at what game he got. So first game we got is 0079. For, oh man, okay, this is a great game. If I had an irresponsible amount of money, I would love to host a tournament with, with this multiplayer. We also got both of the Tony Hawk Underground games. Now, I've never played Tony Hawk Underground 1 so I don't know about that, but I know that Tony Hawk Underground 2 could be very promising if he has any custom skaters in there. Need for Speed Underground. I've never played this game. I don't know what kind of information we'll be able to get off of it. Sonic Mega Collection. A bunch of Genesis games. I don't know if there's anything to glean from this. Sonic Adventure. Um... I wonder if he got past any of the big levels. You know what? There could be some good information if he had a chow garden. All right, Mario Kart Double Dash. Okay, so I'm either going to lose or gain respect for my cousin based on if he has Petey Piranha and uh, King Boo unlocked with this. And finally, Animal Crossing. I hope there's some information. This will be the best information if, if, if there's information on the uh, memory card. It took up 59 blocks, so who knows? All right, so come along with me, the video game anthropologist, as we discover what my cousin had on his Nintendo GameCube. Let's look what we got. Oh, this is this is a ghost. I want to see if I can beat that time. Wow, three custom skaters from Tony Hawk Underground One, maybe even four, depending on what that is. Oh, never mind. We're gonna have four. There's gonna be something. This might be a stage. I know that there was a stage customizer. Time splitters. Oh, we didn't get a time splitters. You know what? I'm gonna go out and buy this. Straight up, Time Splitters Future Perfect is one of the best games ever. So that'll be awesome to look through what he's got there. Razor, okay, so two people have played Need for Speed. We got some profiles on Nightfire. Okay, Double Dash. Okay, so he does have some information. We'll see if he got PD Piranha. I mean, he, he was able to get 1 minute and 43 seconds on. Is that gonna be Baby Park? I see Baby Park. 
Well, we'll see. Played for five hours, you know, nine years ago. This really is archaeology, man. Okay, we got some more custom skaters. We are gonna have a lot of custom skaters to look at. Chow Garden, yes, okay, okay. We got some information for that. And of course, Star Skating Hutch, who could ever forget? The sad thing is, is that we've got 56 blocks open. I'm guessing that they had an Animal Crossing profile and they deleted it just because it's a big investment, a lot of blocks. If anybody played back in the day, they realized what an investment is. But I guess Mike had to have his own Nightfire profile, so they had to city. I would have loved to have looked through their Animal Crossing city. All right, so I got them. Starsky and Hutch and Time Splitters. He sent the disc in this. He didn't even, okay, cool. However, I probably should have looked through the cases before I uh, bought anything because um, now I've got two copies of Starsky and Hutch. Okay, real talk for a second. Do you think there are more humans on Earth who have two copies of Starsky and Hutch or who have three copies of Animal Crossing? Yo, how cool am I right now? Also, tragically, Mario Kart Double Dash was empty. However, fortunately, a couple of years ago, my friend Scott gave me a copy of Mario Kart Double Dash. The only catch was he didn't have the case for it. So now I have exactly one case of Mario Kart Double Dash and one disc of Mario Kart Double Dash. Balance restored! All right, but let's go to the games. We will start with Nightfire. All right, Mike, let's see if it was worth wiping out an entire Animal Crossing town. And while Bite Size and Mike didn't have anything, Clay had gone through most of the game on Agent, and Joe had only gotten the first two levels. Fortunately, Clay's profile had Odd Job unlocked, so I was able to play a little bit of the multiplayer. So, so much fun. Check, check out these kills. Hey, Jaws. Hey, Jaws, buddy. Got him. Ah, exactly. Get ready for a shot. Gonna die. Fair to Sammy, man. So since he had Odd Job unlocked and I was able to get a kill with that hat, I'll go ahead and give him a passing grade on 007 Nightfire. All right, let's give Need for Speed a look at. All right, so Need for Speed only had three profiles, Razor, Joe, and Jesse. And the first thing I did once booting up this game was kill the music. I didn't want Little John to get me copyrighted or honestly probably even demonetized. So I poked around on Jesse's profile for a while, and I couldn't really find a custom card, and there was a really bad lap time, and I was able to beat that on my first go. Then I hopped over to Razor's profile, and they had a car with five-star reputations. Is that good? I'm, I'm assuming that's good. It's Jesse only had, like, zero stars, honestly. Razor's time on the course was far more competitive. I spent, like, 20 to 25 minutes trying to beat it, but I just couldn't until I'm like, wait. I'm not having fun doing this, and, and then I bounce from Need for Speed. Oh yeah, I got him! <laughs> okay, for the most part, I'm gonna skip Tony Hawk Underground 1 because honestly, the disc was too scratched and anything. Like, the most we have is this, this was his custom skater. All right, but Underground 2, I, I, I know this one. Once again, we have another game that's trying desperately to copyright strike me. But oh yeah, look at this menu. That That is definitely clay. Okay. And there are a lot of custom skaters I can check out, but like four of them are wearing the same suit and hat. And there's one skater who looks like this. Well, let's go take Clay's 17 year old skater for a ride and see what we got. Okay, okay. So he beat the game on easy because we have Shrek, but he didn't beat it on normal because we don't have the sea captain. If I check out where he is on the story, he's on level 2, likely on higher difficulty. This game really makes you want to go on higher difficulties because of how many unlocks there are. But I think my challenge is going to go and beat his highest free skate score. Alright, 200,000 on Barcelona. It took me about 30 minutes to find a good rail grind spot and a place to do a neutral? And I eventually managed to transit by 100k. Alright, Sonic Adventure DX. DX stands for Director's Cut. Oh man, oh boy, was Sonic Adventure a real letdown. He only had two emblems, so I'm assuming he beat the first two levels of Sonic and then didn't even play as Tails. Wasn't even Big the Cat that made him give up. I was a little lost in the open world, but when I finally found the Chow Gardens, it was a real letdown. Not a single Chow had been hatched. 
but there was something cool that I did find. A penguin. Over a decade ago, one of my cousins collected that penguin, and it's been sitting here ever since. So I decided to hatch one of the chows, and then I let it chow down on this well-aged delicacy. I want to know who in 2003 said, you know what we really need a game about? A 1975 cop drama. And already I've said too much about this. My cousin completed 0% of the game. Time Splitters was pretty disappointing. Clay F exclamation point at sign dollar sign only completed 5 of the 14 levels and only 7 challenges on easy. Honestly, challenges added so much replay value to this game. Or maybe the map editor. Man, this thing was sick. And hey, now that I own a copy, maybe I'll do a proper review. You know what the most depraved part of this video was? Seeing Activision and EA's logos on good games. Before I left Time Splitter, I made sure to get at least a gold on one of the challenges. And then I played a couple of arcade matches because this game was so cool. Granted, this is the game where I lost the most respect for my cousin because his controls were on. <laughs> Inverted! Over in Soul Calibur 2, we have another file that was owned by Joe. Granted, not that impressive of a profile, only three chapters of Webmaster were completed, and it looks like an hour of gameplay, most of it as Young Sung. Yep, there we go, bye bye! Bye, Cassandra! Alright, Mario Kart Double Dash. So, Mario Kart Double Dash holds a lot of the juiciest data. I could tell automatically from the unlocks that they had beaten the Star Cup on 100cc, which unlocks the Special Cup, and then they beat the Special Cup on 100cc to unlock Toad. But then I found the records. It seems that someone named Dog beat a lot of the levels on 50cc, and there's another person by the name of Bree who did some work. But once again, Joe was sitting there with some of the most coveted spots, like the two unlocks I was talking about. However, it seems that nobody had the strength or courage to take anything on in 150cc. Also, that ghost was from 2002. And while I thought it was going to be cool to play with a member of my family from the past, 143 on Baby Park is actually one of the worst times yet conceived. I laughed, that decades old specter. Alright, so that was the gaming anthropologist. This was a bunch of fun. However, if I was like them and, you know, I just received this, I'd make some assumptions. I'm like, okay, so Clay obviously liked the skateboard games. Joe was the main owner. And obviously their brother Jesse just liked racing games. Granted, I actually know who owned that. There, there is no Joe in that family that I know of. I don't even think there's a Jordan. I know that Jesse is a girl. Clay, Clay is my age. Joe was probably his friend. But it is weird that Joe played more than that. And Mike... I bet they didn't like Mike. I bet Mike had to use this abomination of a controller. All right, well, thanks for stopping by. This was so much fun for me to shoot. I don't even, I don't even care if it gets watched. Like, I just wanted to make this episode just for me. All right, see you later.